Hi everyone, Melanie and Grace here. This is Heat and Bond for my block of the month at the Orange Quilt Bee here in um, <laughs> Anaheim, California. Um, I have this awesome dispenser that I got from Missouri Star Quilt Company. You just easily cut it and I'm just showing you the shiny side. And here is the pattern. Um, it's so funny, I first started tracing this with my heat erasable pen and you're gonna see me kind of go through. I'm just tracing, I'm not using a light box or anything. It's just really nice that the piece that I'm tracing is a dark color. Now, you're gonna see me bring out my, um... oh yeah, I forgot, I trim it. There's me trimming it just to make sure that it's a size. Um, and then here I'm gonna be tracing out the smaller piece separate because they are two separate pieces and I did not want to have to cut my my template. So I'm just making the second one, gonna trim this down again. And then I'm gonna bring out my ironing mat, which is my wool ironing mat. It is nice and large. It's I think 24 by 36 um, or 18 by 24, something like that. I will go ahead and link this in the notes below so you'll have that at your fingertips. This is my Oliso mini iron, which I actually enjoy. I do wish I had a bigger one, but I work in a small space. So here I am, I'm just about to iron it on and I realize I'm using a heat eraser marker. So again, I bring out my template and I get my Sharpie so I can make sure it's nice and dark. Um, and I am writing on the paper side of the um, heat and bond. Here, I'm gonna do that little side again. And now I can iron it on. All that pink is gonna disappear, as you see. And now I'm just fusing it on to the red. And this is a patriotic quilt that I'm doing. Um, and then here is a small blue center grabbing my fabric scissors. I'm gonna very carefully cut these out and you can see how fun this part is. I get my little snips to get in the corners. And we just keep on cutting, keep on cutting. Keep on. I probably should cut this part out, but I'm gonna let you guys suffer with me. <laughs> Just kidding, don't fast forward, please. The longer you view with me, the more credit YouTube gives me. If you want me to cut the stuff out in the future, please comment below. Let me know that you don't wanna see all the cutting. And then I can just edit these out further, but. I already edited it before I put the, the <laughs> my vocals on, so. Speaking of, how do my vocals sound? I just got a new lavalier um, or lapel microphone for my phone um, to make things a little bit easier for me because my phone audio is pretty poor. All right, so there we go. Now I have my background. I'm going to fold this in half so I can find the exact center. Iron out all the creases from the quilt shop, make sure that I have it done. Here I fold it in half and then I just fold it in half again so I have that nice little crisscross in the middle. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the blue down. Um, after I looked at it, I realized it wasn't quite even, so I think I did go in and I just trimmed it down a little bit just to make it a little bit more of this star shape. And then once you figure where that is, you're gonna go ahead and iron it. I made sure that each one of my points are on each one of the folds. Then here I'm pulling off the paper again of the large one, making sure that I center it again with a cross right in the middle of that star. Then I'm gonna iron this down as well. Um, this is in super fast mode, but I am holding my iron there for at least 30 seconds. And as a best practice, I always flip it over to the back to make sure I grab any glue that wasn't melted. And there we go. So now you're gonna see me. Um, normally I stitch on a Juki, uh, my QVP, my 18 QVP TL. Um, I love that machine so much, but it's a straight stitch. So I had to bring out my brother. Um, my brother is a, um, I'll have to link it below. It's an, it's an older machine, but it has all those zigzag stitches and I hang on to it so I can have um, ability to do things like this, do these zigzags. And so here I am using this variegated blue thread. Um, as I was sewing, uh, it looks like the bobbin got a little loose, so I had to re-thread everything. And then I picked it out. And I must say, if you're ever doing a buttonhole stitch, it is so easy to pick out because of the way the stitches are. And now I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna go through each side. And I have this phone mount that's kind of wiggly, but here we go. Sorry for the angle. 
Um, again, if you don't want to see all this stuff in the future, please leave a comment below that says just show us the cutting, the initial process, and then just have me um, tell you all about it without showing you all this. But again, the longer you view my continuous uh, videos, the more credibility YouTube gives me when I post these videos so more people will be able to find me. I'm not sure what happened there. I think I had to rethread the machine again. But yeah, since this was variegated, I wanted to use blue variegated thread to really just make it pop. We're coming around the end. Um, first thing I always did on here is I did the red flower first, and then after I did all four sides of the flower, then I went in and I just did the same uh, buttonhole stitch around, um, or blanket stitch, I'm sorry, blanket stitch around the blue center. And then from there, um, I just took it back and I trimmed it to the 12 and a half um, square. And oh, here I am going into the blue, and then I was done. Um, I highly recommend using the heat and bond method. It makes applique so much easier and so much faster. And this um, blanket stitch is a very fun stitch. I'll be sure to show you at the very end what it looks like. And yes, I'm at my dining room table because, yeah, <laughs> there we go. I wanted to fix that edge. Trim, 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 trim. And there we are. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you tune in and subscribe for more sewing videos and who knows, maybe some more music videos. Oh, and watch more here. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.